Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me on what I hope is going to be a lazy afternoon repot on the east side of my patio together with my cat Dawiana and you. And I hope that it will actually be a lazy repot and nothing substantial here. Just chill out on a beautiful balmy spring afternoon. Now, you might be wondering, is this going to be the lazy way of repotting? I'm just going to be picking out my roots with my tweezers. No, <laughs> don't worry. We'll get into it. But I'm a little bit behind schedule on repotting this Dawiana. I wish I could have done it sooner because the roots are already a little bit too long for when I like to time my repots. However, better to get it done than not at all. And, and that is why I'm using my tweezers to make sure that I clear the area of lecker as best as possible so that when it comes to pouring out the lecker or bashing the pot with a hammer, if needs must, then at least I will have exposed the new roots so that I can keep an eye on them. Just a little bit more on this side. But yeah, I appreciate that you're here. Thank you very, very much not expecting anything sensational with this repot it's just going to be get in there deep clean after two years of this orchid in this pot she is such a vigorous root grower which is so appreciated nice to have an orchid that is happy to produce roots theoretically because of the distance from the pot i could leave her in one more year but i did a little assessment of the pot a separate video as to why i'm going in the main reason being it's been two years that's sort of my minimum at least two years if i don't have to up pot maximum three years but because she's such a vigorous root grower we're going in two years later as opposed to three so nice to see some viable roots in here if these roots would still be at nubbin stage the way I prefer them to be, as opposed to already extending. I would be just, you know, draining the pot, getting my hammer out and going for it. But <laughs> under these circumstances, nope, we're not doing that. So let's get as much of this out as we possibly can. And I have soaked her with calcium and magnesium. That's what's still in the pot. I would like to get some of these root tips off they're not growing points, but the weight of the lecker is going to kink them. The moment I go at it and move it, it's going to be the lecker doing the damage. And we'll try and save as many as possible. And only once I see what I'm up against inside the pot, then can I get radical and do a little bit more, you know, taking off roots that are actually viable if necessary because it's all about getting the aeration the circulation back into the pot re-establish a healthy climate in the pot for the next two years and hopefully that she will also bloom because she came to me as near blooming size and that was three years ago so I'm expecting not this year now that I'm repotting her but next year if nothing goes wrong I'm expecting Dawiana blooms on my patio. That'll be a beautiful day. Let's get you in a little bit closer because I have a lot of roots circling around the surface of the pot. You see all that? Hey, <laughs> For all of us that like to see fiddle going on, it's showtime. Very, very carefully. It's at this stage that I am um, pretending that I don't have many viable roots in my pot and each root is precious. Many minutes later, <laughs> I have dug out a few more Lekka beads because there was roots also attached a little bit lower than the surface line. I wanted to see what I was up against there. I want to see if I can move those and I needed to remove Lekka beads so that I can get some give. But I think she's pretty much detached now. 
can I get this out? It's just a question of being one more, just to want to see one more. No, that's too lodged in. Well, it's hammer time. Let's see if this worked. One more thing though that I want to show you. Look at the back, how there are no roots in the back here. That is absolutely normal. That's why she could easily be in this pot for another year. But you see, the roots are doing all the business and all the growing at the front here. So this back space is pretty much obsolete. And I'm hoping to possibly get rid of all the little ones back here as well. All the little pseudobulbs, seedling bulbs, we shall see. But I wanted to show you that if you ever encounter something like this in your semi-hydro pot and you're panicked because you're hearing that this setup kills roots. Well, when you look at this, you would say, oh, absolutely, it kills roots. And I'm going to never put my Dawiana or anything in semi-hydro self-watering. This is normal. This is the oldest part of the orchid. And the roots will die C or C. And some orchids even have the habit of doing it every year, regardless of the setup, and produce a new root system every single year. So if you see this, and you've had your orchid in semi-hydro, self-watering, just know that it's all fine, it's all good. And keep watching the video because that is what I'm going to be talking about. What I talk about in most of my repots is how to maintain the health and climate of the pot. Instead of talking, let's get on with it. Now it's hammer time. Unless, of course, she decides to just come out, slip out easily. <laughs> then, of course, we will not be applying the hammer. So first of all, let's give it a test and see if she'll just slide out. <laughs> Wishful thinking wishful thinking. And I'm going to stay at the back as far away as possible from the front where there's viable roots because the velamen itself can get bashed even if you just squeeze a pot lightly. Of course you're squeezing hard material against soft tissue and of course it's going to get bruised. There's no two ways about it but it's nice that we have some space in the back here that we can work with. I still have some roots that have circled inside the pot that are look a little bit too attached for my liking. So I'm gonna relieve those with a bit of squeezing. They do also move themselves, which is awesome. In the front, it's much, much harder, more solid. Clearly, obviously, any dead roots will not have the resistance and the pushback the way live roots would have. Give her a little bit of a jiggle. If I can get her out without using the hammer, I'm going to be very, very happy. Okay, I just snapped a pot. Not a root, that was the pot, which also annoys me to no end. So what we're going to do is hit her, <laughs> hit the pot from the bottom. Because the microfiber, I hope that's visible, the microfiber is holding her back. Just want to make sure I get a firm grip because if the pot is brittle, I don't need it snapping in my hand and have the orchid flying everywhere. Being mindful of the root tips. There's root tips over here as well. Root tips everywhere. It's heaven. You coming? Please play ball. I can feel her giving. She's giving. She's on her way. Aha, 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 aha. She's on her way. There we go. Fabulous. Oh, this is going to be a great report. I love it already. Look at that. And let's take a note of the root ball. The Lekka is mixed. Large and small-ish, medium size. It's all mixed, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm putting her back into the same kind of mixed lecker. I'm not distinguishing between sizes because she has smaller roots, and she clearly is absolutely digging this setup. So she likes a lot of water. We're going to give her a lot of water. Let me just qualify that statement just now <laughs> before I get into more. We are going to give her access to more water by using the mixed lecker as opposed to just using large lecker. No need to change what we've done here in previous years. You can also see here the support ring. This was an up pot the last time I potted her up two years ago. 
So the first year when I got her, I waited for her to acclimate. I waited for her to show me signs of new roots. Then I potted her up into a 15, 20 meter pot. The first year she did brilliantly that she actually was growing roots again out of the pot. So in the second year, all I did was pot her up one pot size and put lecker at the base of the bigger pot, raise the root ball up that was visible, where you can see this was the pot line from the older pot and filled around with LECA, which is amazing. And I think that you can also pot up with organic media, but personally, well, I don't grow in organic media anymore. So for me being able to up pot, let's just say she had stayed in here for another year, making that three years in total, my media wouldn't have broken down. It's all good. So up potting is definitely like a little rescue mission without disturbing the orchid. But that doesn't mean that it's then an indefinite setup that you don't have to go in, just like with organic media, to clean up a root ball. Now, because I can see what I'm doing and it's not that tightly bound as with other repots, that's why I'm just going to take my sweet time and pick out the lecker that is falling out easily so I can dislodge the microfiber if it were to come out easily. If it doesn't, a little yank and a tear here, <laughs> it'll come out. See or see, it's gonna come out. Making sure where my root tips are and my new growth is. I'm just cutting away some of the old roots that had attached themselves to the microfiber. I'm not going to be cutting any viable roots just yet. If I don't need to, of course I won't, further down the line either. Okay, I've discovered a root is growing through that part. There's a root going straight through the microfiber, which happens. And because I've got all this gorgeousness going on here, I'm just gonna cut that root off. There's more of the root system. I don't need to worry about one root. Not that my microfiber is more important, but you know. I could be sitting here with headlights on <laughs> with a headlamp, so to speak, because it's very, very late in the afternoon. But if I don't finish this project today, at least I got this part out of the way and I can potter up in the morning. I'm not saying I'm behind, but like I said, this one I would have liked to address a week or even 10 days ago. Ideally, also, I don't want to be cutting my support. I would like that to come out in one piece so I can reuse it. I'm also thinking ahead. I'm focusing more on the back part here, not only for the fact that it is easier because there's dead roots and I have air gaps and I can work my way into the center of the root ball, but also because if I'm gonna be cutting away some of the back parts here, the little seedling bulbs, if there's any entanglement of old roots, then it'll just pop right out, exposing even more of the root ball. So trying to think a little bit strategically here. And push comes to shove. If the novelty of doing this wears off, <laughs> then I will be cutting the root ball to where the support is. But we'll give this a go first. It's a beautiful afternoon. Only thing that's working against me at the moment is the fact that eventually it's gonna get dark. <laughs> but isn't that the case with every repot? I mean, you know, if you have a really big case that you have to do, you could be spending hours and hours on a repot <laughs> and eventually it's going to get dark. That's okay. We got to get started. High noon with this one. There's a rare occasion when I say, please don't grow roots so fast. Please slow down. <laughs> I was watching these roots growing. I'm like, no, wait. Wait for me. I promise I need to get into you and clean you up. Keep misting. Don't want anything to be exposed what it's not used to. Don't want things to dry out here. And in the meantime, I brought Siliano out. So he's in the jungle gym and if I'm talking, 
and he starts to squawk. Greetings from Siliano. It's called, I don't want to say it, but you know the saying, killing two birds with one stone <laughs> or one lecker pebble. It's a figure of speech. <laughs> Okay, let the chopping begin. I still haven't released my support, but I certainly created quite the oration in here. I'm gonna start with cleaning off the root system that I can see that is dead. Even if I take off some of the roots that are dead at the top, but viable at the bottom, I'm not bothered about that. First of all, I've got back up. I've got a new root system growing. Secondly, they would die anyway. It would give them, I would give them like six months before they would die in the pot. So that's okay. If you see roots coming out that are white and viable, it's all good. It's all under control. Now you can see how this is branching right here. It's desiccated from being on the surface and then it's branching with something new and fresh, but it's also branching right here, but it has a desiccated branch there. Those kinds of things I take off completely to the point where there is no more branching. Beautiful root tip. We're gonna try and salvage that. Keyword being try. Even if I don't remove dead roots like this, we would be all set. It's just such a beautiful afternoon that I'm going to be a little bit more pedantic about it and, you know, go about my business as if I had all the time in the world and just plop my way through because what I don't want to do is cut off root tips down here, but you see how straggly that is. It's not really, I've got lots of little blackened tips here. So I may just, instead of talking about it, just do it. <laughs> okay, let me get my, let me make my life over the sink easier for later on. Viable roots, I know. But you see what we've got going on here. Oh, it's a beautiful sight. It's all good, and we're all set for the next two years. So what we're going to do is take off a quarter. Yeah. Okay. 
And I'm hoping my arm wasn't in the way for all of that. <laughs> but basically, you see what I'm doing? I'm taking off just a quarter at the base. Any stragglers, you know, they're not, they're not going to amount to that much. It doesn't hurt. Clean the hands, rinse the orchid. I think we've done as good a job as any considering what we started off with. I may find some funky little branches here and there now. I may want to nip off or not. This is not just a little rinse, but this is, this is her. Look at that. I like it. We still have two thirds of a root ball left that is absolutely viable and going bonkers. Root tips everywhere. I managed to even, let me see if I can show you. I was really working around one root tip in here. There it is. Bear with me. It's worth it. <laughs> you see that, that root tip in there? Right in there. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that a pretty sight? Yay. I managed to work around it. It's still good. And the ones on the top, they're perfect. All right. We are going to potter up now. Woo okay, so three years ago she went into a 15 centimeter pot. Two years ago she went into an 18 centimeter pot. And this time I'm bumping her up into a 20 centimeter pot. Because if her rhizome is anything to go by, hopefully next season we're going to get another direction of growth. Got plenty of eyes down there that are like teasing me. And I'm not seeing that they're going to move this year. But it could be next year, and with her root vigor, she is going to need this space, even though I could have put her back into her 18 centimeter pot, but I don't want to be touching this orchid again for another two years, if possible three. Let's get our support, the one that we worked so hard to remove. Let's fill our pot with water. There we go. Let's get our orchid! Way! That's her woody little rhizome at the end there. I'm not going to touch it with cinnamon or anything like that. Don't hate me. There is no need. There's not much going to be happening here with the warm air that we have right now. It's just going to dry out perfectly. No need to fuss. I'm more concerned about my root tips staying intact and the cinnamon. With the amount of root tips that I have, it's just too risky. So. We're going to do it this way. And we're going to position her not all the way to the back. I want her somewhat in the middle, maybe a smidgen to the back. And we're going to start with large leka and see how we fare with some large leka. And it's going to be tedious, a little bit time consuming, because I want all the leka to fall nicely between the gaps. And I'm going to turn her around because I'm working with root tips over there. <laughs> and I've got root tips over here. Oh dear. The conundrum, the conundrum. Root tips everywhere. Well, I'm just going to have to be slow, careful, take my time. Same way that this repot started, it's going to end that way. So I'm not going to assume that you have watched me repot before. Let me explain what I'm doing here. If you're new to my channel, if you're seeing this for the first time, I fill the pot with water for a reason. First of all, I don't want any of that hard lecker to be bashing on the tender, tender root tips and the velamen that we've just pretty much, you know, taken apart. And yeah, we've done our bit, enough damage with the damage that we've done. But I don't want these root tips to have leka just falling on them radically. So filling up the pot with water allows the leka to literally just sort of slide in, in their own buoyant way, into the air gaps much more easily, much more readily. And also if they land on the root tips, which is inevitable in a repot, it's much, much more softer and more, you know, just a little bit more gentler. But it's at this point, I have filled the back with large leka, and now I'm going to do the rest with smaller leka. Just give you a size comparison. That's what we filled the back with, the empty space, and the rest of the pot is now getting small, medium-sized leka. I 
And because we have such a tight root ball, I'm not putting it all in at once. Small increments, give it a shake. So that the lacquer itself doesn't block up against each other, against all the beads, and prevents itself from actually falling into the crevices where we want it. And when you do that, hold on to your orchid. She will want to take off. You know how orchids like to start to lift themselves out of a pot? Same thing here. So there's a huge gaping hole in here. Of course I want that filled with Lekka. I don't mind having few air gaps, but it is massive in there. And those roots that are down there, they are not used to having that much air around them. So, oh, it's like going back to the start. At first we were picking off the Lekka with tweezers. Now we're putting it in with tweezers. Oh well. Only one thing I'm a little bit bothered by is I have this tiny little gap around here, around the edge. Yeah. They used to touch the pot previously, so it's gonna be okay. It's just me being pedantic, that's all. Okay, let's raise her up. Little bit more of cow mag and seaweed in here. All good. She looks a bit lopsided. A little bit of name of the game here, but I want to keep these roots on the surface here. A little bit more in contact with the leka because of the humidity that that provides them. Don't want to be misting too much with the eyes developing and forming. So I'm going to use leka to do that for me. And if need be, microfiber will follow. Oh boy. Unfortunately, one root tip that I wanted to save was broken, but for the majority, all the root tips I was keeping an eye on during this repot, they survived the process, not including the Figaro act that we did at the bottom of the root ball, taking off a quarter, and some of those had root tips, but <laughs> for the most part, you, I'm happy this is done. And I'm so happy that you joined me if you've made it through to the end of the video. Thank you very, very much. That will be it for today. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, you have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.